When you think of the Subaru WRX, maybe you think of something like this. Or maybe you think of something more like this. Well, when I think of the WRX, I think of this, my 2015 WRX Premium. There are a whole ton of videos and reviews about this car online, so I'm not going to bore you with repeating the same thing everybody else has said. I'm just going to talk about this car and what I've done to it to make it my own. On the outside, there's not a whole lot distinctive about it, and I like it that way. I do have a ham radio antenna on the trunk lid for radio communications, and just a few stickers on the back window and my ham radio call sign, the license plate. Other than that, nothing too obvious. But I do have a Diodynamics SmartTap flasher relay, which adds all kinds of interesting features. The main reason I got SmartTap is so I could flick the turn signal lever once and get a number of flashes out of it. It's also pretty useful for lighting up the area around the car when I approach or walk away. As a beneficial side effect, I can make it look a little bit like a disco show. <laughs> Moving to the inside, there's my K40 RLS2 radar detector GPS connected. with GPS. There's nothing particularly fancy about the shifter. But I did add a pair of shift stops, which limits the back and forth movement when you're in gear. It's uh, very, very tight. And a little adjustment on the stock stopper on this side makes it not quite as good as a BRZ shifter, but darn close. Another unique addition is my Wuxin KGUV920P-A-220. What the heck is that? It's a ham radio for the 144 and 222 megahertz amateur radio bands. It's definitely not something every WRX driver needs or can even legally use since you need a ham radio license to use it. But with all the rallies I attend and provide communications to, it's handy. Not to mention just chatting with people on the way to work. Like every other WRX owner in the world, I have a Cobb access port. I typically run the basic off-the-shelf stage one tune for 93 octane, since we drink the sweet stuff here in Massachusetts. Yeah, there's a bit of a power increase, but I find the even better improvement is the drivability of the car. The gas pedal is not as touchy or as much of an on-off switch as it is with a stock tune. And uh, my gas mileage is actually better than stock. For more about that, Check out my column on thedrive.com where I go into more detail. And finally, there's the head unit, which is really not much good to me for anything more than a cell phone holder and a Bluetooth amplifier. This head unit looks like it came straight out of the year 1986. GPS connected. I mean, yes, it'll connect to Bluetooth, and pretty soon my phone's going to start blasting this out, probably. Look at the thing. All these buttons, no touch screen. It's, it's straight out of the 80s. My MP3 player that I put in my 1995 Saturn SC2 looked better than this. But don't worry. I think I know exactly what to do about that. And, of course, we can't forget Wesley, the Dread Pirate Trunk Monkey. Trunk monkeys, contrary to what a Chevy dealer in the Northwest U.S. would have you believe, were originally designed specifically for Subarus to assist with weight transfer during high-speed cornering. I know this to be true because I know the guy who invented the thing. 
Oh, and I also added these LED bulbs to all of the interior lights just to make them a more classy color. So yep, that's really all I've done to this car. But it's just the daily driver. I have taken it to the track on occasion, but mostly it just gets me to work and back. Nothing too radical for mods, so it'll stay reliable and on the road. But I do have a, uh, what do you call it?